And we're live. Welcome, Rahima. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So China has been in the news a lot lately, and so has the Uyghur Muslim population, but I'd say not for good reasons. There are stories of some are saying just re-education camps that the Uyghur population is being put into. Others are saying it's a genocide. It seems like there's not much information coming out of China, so it's very hard to know what is going on. But you are a Uyghur Muslim from China, and you have some contact with people there. Is that correct? Um, well, I am uh, actually originally from a region called the Hulja. Uh, it's the north of East Turkestan, uh, what the Chinese uh, call it Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Um, since January 2017, I completely uh, lost contact, direct contact with my family and with all the people th there. But through my work as an interpreter, translator, and I do uh, get a lot of information through uh, third party, uh, through third person, or uh, also the survivors um, who were uh, locked up in these so-called re-education camps, but it's a concentration. It's a concentration camp. Well, it's horrible to hear, and you know, just just the word concentration camp gives me chills. Being a Jew and having half my family uh, murdered in the Holocaust, so I, you know, I I, I, I share your pain, and um, it's it's horrible. You know, it, it leaves me speechless. We we often say never again, but those seem to just be words because, as we see, it is happening again, and. You know, it's there have been multiple other genocides since the Holocaust. It seems like this is the most recent of them all. What exactly are some stories you're hearing? What what is happening to people who are being rounded up and and put in these camps? Well, uh, just as you said, it is it's very hard to believe. You know, this is happening now and. Even for me, um, every day is like a nightmare, and I wish that it's just a nightmare that I can I can wake up from it. But this has been uh, over four years now. Um, since uh, two thousand and seventeen, in April, um, the earliest uh, the mass. Uh, arrest that I know of. It started from April 2017. And uh, people were either summoned to the police station, the police called them up, said, well, we, we need to ask you some questions. And then they never uh, came back home and indefinitely detained. And there were many uh, police went to their home or uh, to their workplace and uh, just placed black hood over their head, handcuff them and take them away. Um, up to 2018 August, the very first um, uh, that figure, the number of people, according to the, uh, the, the uh, sources uh, that has been um, the reports submitted to the UN, not just from the Uyghur uh, community or Uyghur organizations, but also uh, from the independent researchers, up to one million Uyghurs and other uh, Muslims uh, locked up in these uh, so-called re-education camps. Um, but uh, since then, uh, this uh, arrest continued and never stopped. I know many uh, people, uh, that I know of that we interviewed with the BBC, with the Sky News, with um, many other journalists who are investigating about the situation. They, there are a lot of uh, people, you wouldn't find it difficult to believe up to 30 members of the uh, family and extended families disappeared and confirmed to be detained. 
and I know some families even here in the UK um, got, the, got the news, uh, terrible news that, um, uh, you know, someone in the family died after uh, they were released or died inside the camps. So um, it is a very, very difficult situation for us and uh, um, hard to believe and hard to explain the motive uh, other than a genocidal motive that is, you know, um, happening to, to my people. I'm so, so, so sorry to hear that. You mentioned motive. Would you say that it seems like every just every genocide has a reason? It's obviously never justified, but the people doing it find a way to justify it, you know, in their own mind. Would you say that their justification has to do with wanting the Uyghur population to be committed first and foremost to the Chinese government? and they see them as a threat because they're not loyal? Would you say that's how they are rationalizing this? Yes, um, the Chinese government consistently, repeatedly uh, claiming that they are de-radicalizing the Uyghur population because the Uyghurs are uh, Islamic extremists, uh, and they, they are a threat to the society, to, to, to the people there. Um, but if you look at the history of the Uyghurs and, uh, you know, that the incidents uh, that happened even in recent years compared to the many other countries and uh, many Muslim countries or even the West uh, is not as um, serious as what uh, Chinese government claim. And uh, even if, uh, you know, there were some uh, so-called terrorist uh, attacks that happened, uh, um, of course, we completely denounce any kind of violence. Um, you know, Uyghur people are very peaceful people. Um, since the Chinese occupation, especially the latest CCP, Chinese Communist Party occupation uh, in 1949, throughout uh, during the last 71 years, actually uh, massacre, uh, you know, many massacres uh, happened um, one after another from 1958, the rightist uh, movement, then during the Cultural Revolution, and then in the 80s, um, the Baran uh, massacre, the Gulja massacre um, in 1997, that is one of the events that I made a decision to leave uh, my, my country in 2000. Uh, so I, I, when you look at the, the level of the persecution and the oppression, um, that Uyghurs faced, uh, you know, since the CCP occupation. And then you look at the resistance and any kind of uh, fight back or attacks. Um, it is uh, uncomparable. It's just impossible to compare uh, the amount of uh, people, the amount of innocent Uyghurs were killed during these uh, la last 71 years, and then uh, especially recent years since China declared that, uh, you know, 9-11, that they also share the, the uh, Islamic terrorist um, problems. But uh, nothing, nothing can justify a country uh, round up um, over a million or three million uh, people into these torture camps, uh, because we know it is torture camps from the teachers who taught uh, in these facilities, also some survivors 
who were foreign nationals and uh, was uh, released after uh, serving one year or uh, several months. And uh, the uh, description of the uh, torture, the abuse, and the, the uh, situation, the crowdness, and uh, sterilizations, sexual violence, all this is so consistent because these people didn't come from one region. They all uh, uh, served or uh, detained in, a, in camps in very different part of the region. And uh, it looks like the whole uh, system is uh, following a certain certain rules from the from from the authorities, and uh, uh, only last year November uh, that uh, there was two major um, classified documents leak, and that those leaked document confirmed uh, all what we have been hearing uh from from people um so it is uh, the the intention of the chinese government is to eradicate is to eliminate the Uyghur uh, people uh, they are not only after the people who they think or who they claim to be uh, radicalized but the people uh just Uyghur people, intellectuals, we know among these millions that has been detained, very well-known uh, intellectuals, artists, um, sports persons, uh, models, um, religious scholars um, who have been openly um, teaching in uh, the authorized institutes and also were big, uh, serving as imam in the communities. All of them gone, including uh, some very well-known philanthropists who built schools for Uyghur children who couldn't afford uh, to go to the state schools. And they were taken away and we learned that their sentence uh, that they received were uh, over 20 years some given suspended death penalties. Four uh, Uyghur University, ex-university presidents, two of them were given two years suspended death penalties, and we don't know what happened to them. So this is not, uh, it's impossible to justify that uh, China's government only uh, using these facilities just to uh, do some kind of vocational training mm -hmm. or uh, direct, uh, direct radicalizing um, the extremists. Uh, only uh, two, three days ago, the Chinese white paper, uh, they openly admitted that since 2014, they have been um, providing uh, vocational training to the Uyghurs uh, each year, 1.3 million people. What's that train? What training? They call it vocational training. 1.3 million Uyghurs each year. V vocational training. Yeah, that's what as they call vocational as training. As if and they're just teaching them different trades and stuff. Well, they say that they are teaching them the Chinese language and also rule of law. Uh, so they, uh, uh, their propaganda is that uh, how they actually providing this kind of free education uh, mm -hmm. for these people um, who stay in those facilities uh, where food and accommodation accommodations are free but we know from the people who detained who were detained in these uh, facilities who taught in this uh, so-called vocational training camps that uh, it's just a horror what is happening there is one of horror if you ever read 
any of those reports, uh, you would know. Wow. So it, it seems like that's how they're, if you were to ask an average Chinese individual in Shanghai or Beijing, and you were to ask them about the situation, it seems like they would not even acknowledge that there's something wrong going on. They would say that this is just uh, free education and the government is nice that they're providing them this free education and housing and, and food. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's always every time when even uh, you know, when Uyghurs show any um, peaceful resistance, uh, for example, in 1997, uh, many young men took to the street, protested against um, the re religious restrictions and the cultural restrictions. Um, and that uh, was uh, met by the military um, use of use of military and the killing of a hundred Uyghur men and then followed by mass arrest and for that one peaceful protest which happened on February the 5th to 1997 over 4,000 uh, Uyghurs uh, were arrested and many were given very lengthy prison sentence and for months there were uh, executions um, and the government claimed that they um, found out that they linked to uh, some terrorism activities etc so uh, this is not new um, this uh, the the chinese government uh, has always uh, tried to remove us or silence any dissidents, not only just the Uyghurs or Tibetans, including the Chinese people, Chinese dissidents. That is the most violent method, the violent terror, the, the state terror, using that against the citizens who dare to challenge the rule, challenge their unfair treatments. And therefore, um, what is happening now is only the scale is different. The mm -hmm. scale is is far bigger. The people are targeted far uh, more. Uh, not the, I mean, the large, very large number of people, particularly um, Muslims and uh, uh, and in that Uyghurs, the majority Uyghurs. So. Um, Sometimes I even find it difficult to to understand it myself, even though I read a lot of uh, what they claim, and uh, you know, it is difficult for me to understand the mentality uh, behind um, torturing these um, very peaceful people, harmless, innocent, innocent people make them suffer not only the people who are locked up inside people like myself we are suffering because just not knowing what happened to our own family members and many of us knowing that we have family members are locked up in these camps in these concentration camps so it's not just the people who are locked up or who are living inside uh, East Turkestan are suffering. We are suffering too. Do you, do you have family members that are still there currently? Oh, I was the only one, uh, you know, left um, in 1997. I have uh, four elder brothers and five sisters and their extended families, they all live there, uh, my uncles. And I'm the only one person that left uh, my country among uh, my relatives uh, and, and, and in my family. So um, 
It's very, very hard. It's hard. I, uh, since I came in 2000, I started uh, campaigning for the rights of my people, uh, speaking up uh, about the persecution uh, that the Uyghurs been facing. And for that, I was unable to return. For the, for the last 20 years, I cannot go back. But I was able to communicate with my sisters, with my brothers, uh, almost weekly. And then from January 2017, uh, that also cut short. So I don't know, since then, I, for almost four years now, I didn't hear their voice. I don't know um, what kind of state they are living in. And uh, um, it's very hard. It's hard for me to imagine. Wow. I, I, I can't even imagine what you must be going through. So th there's, there's no way for you to get in contact with anybody in your family. No, I tried. Um, from the some leaked, some leaked documents and also the public notice from the government also the people who are living in turkey that who knows who found out their families are detained also the leaked karakash documents uh, uh, which was published this year in february uh, a lot of Uyghurs uh, were arrested simply because they uh, spoke to someone abroad. And uh, people uh, like me, uh, you know, I'm not just living abroad, I'm a, a human rights activist. I have been speaking up. I am, um, I can say, one of the kind of um, important person according to the Chinese, uh, you know, Chinese government. And uh, it is uh, very obvious that anyone who has connection with me, uh, they are, can be the potential target. And uh, for that reason, uh, uh, the, all these people, their phones are, uh, mm. you know, monitored. And even if I arrange someone else to make phone call, um, that the, their phones are, you know, they, they will find out. So in order to avoid any kind of uh, complications or any kind of risks, just in case if they are, uh, you know, um, at least uh, living at home, at their own homes, and to avoid being uh, arrested, I try not to, um, not to take that risk, not right. for myself, it's for them. Uh, right. So, um, I'm not the only one. Uh, most of the Uyghurs living in the UK um, who never involved in any uh, activities, any protests, uh, they say uh, they, they were also warned uh, during the beginning of 2017, uh, almost at the same time when my brother told me, uh, leave us in God's hand, please. And they were also warned from their parents, said, please don't call us. And uh, you can imagine how a mother can tell her son or daughter um, that please don't call me. I mean, I could only imagine that happening if the, the threat of them calling is a life or death situation. That's, wow. That's, that's exactly uh, what is happening, yeah. What can, um, what can we do? What can the world do? What can individuals do? What can we do to change the situation? Well, um, every time when I, um, I'm asked uh, about this, I lost for words. Uh, first of all, I feel very disappointed and let down by the governments, you know, um, especially um, the governments, they in you, for example, the UK, the EU, the UN, and not really 
taken any uh, practical measures to tackle this, to apart from um, just words of condemnations, up until now, apart from um, US, um, no other countries imposed any kind of sanctions or selective sanctions like Magnitsky sanctions to uh, punish those uh, responsible uh, for uh, the genocide. Um, therefore, the Uyghur organizations and the World Uyghur Congress, I work as a, a project director uh, for the World, World Uyghur Congress here in the UK. And we have pledges, specific pledge for the MPs, for the government here. And number one, we want the government to uh, recognize this is genocide and uh, then take action uh, accordingly. Number two is to um, adopt the Mag Magnitsky style sanctions to those individuals um, and the companies uh, involved in, in this genocide. Um, we want the uh, Winter Olympic, uh, 2022 Winter Olympic, to be removed from Beijing because we feel Beijing shouldn't be given this honor to uh, host uh, Olympic. And we also demanding, uh, you know, trade sanctions due to the forced labor that because um, major brands are using the oil forced labor throughout China. Mm. And so for the individuals, we are asking to um, contact their uh, MPs, uh, their uh, local uh, government officials, and to voice their concerns and uh, also put pressure on government, on their own government to take action. Uh, we're asking the individuals to uh, join protests um, against forced labor, against the, uh, the, this uh, genocide. Uh, we are asking individuals to boycott goods that is made uh, from forced labor. We are asking the companies um, and uh, brands whose uh, supply chain tainted with these uh, forced labor products to pull out from the region. And so there are many, many things we are asking, always uh, new information, uh, you know, um, come out and then we take action. For example, we learned uh, only a few weeks ago, or one or two weeks ago that Disney film Mulan was filmed in in uh, in the region, and uh, and it's open um, uh, credits. It was the 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 uh, filmmaker thanked uh, the Turpan Public Security Bureau, for example, for helping them, or for assisting them with the film uh, fil uh, filmed in the region. And uh, we took um, action against uh, the film Mulan. We calling people to boycott the film because the time when they uh, filmed Mulan in 2018, that was a time that uh, over a million, it became uh, public that over a million Uyghurs and other Muslims were locked up in concentration camps. And yet, um, you know, uh, these big, uh, you know, how to put it, corporations, you know, like this Disney uh, film, that they disregarded the life of these people who have been suffering, right. you know, in these camps, 
and suffering not only in the camps, in their own homes, um, suffocated uh, by these uh, very strict policies that imposed upon Uyghurs, uh, that when Uyghurs, when they go out about, they have to go through uh, checkpoints every 200 meters. Surely these people can see that when they are in the region. And uh, instead of showing their outrage, they have uh, carried out their business as usual and also thanking the public security bureaus that responsible for the arrest, for the torture, for the sexual abuse, for the sterilizations and all those uh, horrors uh, that, you know, that these people are responsible and uh, uh, they thank them for, for uh, assisting to make the film, for example. This is just one example. And we know many um, high-tech uh, companies uh, in many countries involved in providing the service uh, because the control of the Uyghurs, the, the rounding up, the process of rounding up, the process of uh, controlling them within the concentration camps and outside the camps, it required very sophisticated um, high-tech uh, digital technology, uh, like a Huawei, for example, and like a TikTok, the parent company of TikTok. All this involved in providing the service the, the, uh, the surveillance uh, services uh, to uh, collaborate with the uh, public security bureaus of all the uh, cities in the, in the region. Um, so they are directly or indirectly involved in this genocide. Mm -hmm. So we want these companies especially those who are still operating uh, you know, within the UK, EU, and the US to be sanctioned. Is there a, a place where people can find uh, a list of uh, companies to boycott and actions that could be taken? Yes, you can visit the World Uyghur Congress website. There are a lot of uh, reports in that website. Also, Uyghur Human Rights Project um, uh, also has a huge uh, amount of information that links to all the reports about these companies. And the ASPI report, the Australian Institute of the um, and there is a uh, listed about 80 brands, including Apple, Nike, um, uh, Zara, for example, uh, the, the 80 uh, uh, big brands uh, involved in, in uh, the, their supply chains involved in the forced labor. And uh, if you want to know more about uh, Huawei, the allegation against Huawei, about TikTok, and you can, you can find uh, a lot of information, a lot of uh, new reports uh, only within, within uh, last week. Uh, there were some uh, very good new reports about TikTok as well. Um, so not only just the security threat, uh, people, uh, when people talk about Huawei and uh, um, TikTok, uh, people often only talk about how their own data or you know uh, is under under threat but uh, also people need to pay attention that these uh, very companies involved in the the the, the Uyghur genocide thank you for that and for the viewers and listeners i will leave links to those uh, resources in the comments in the description so you can access that 
Um, before we wrap up, is there is there any final words you, you'd like to leave us with? Well, um, thank you very much for, uh, you know, providing me this platform and to provide information for the viewers uh, from my own personal perspective um, of what is happening to my people. Um, I would like people to actively search Uyghur genocide. Um, follow me on Twitter, Rahima Mahmoud, on Facebook. <clears throat> and uh, also we will be launching a new uh, website, Stop Uyghur Genocide Campaign. And I want you to follow that as well. We will have new campaigns. We call people to join. Uh, all around the world. Um, so please uh, take active actions. Uh, of course, if you sh have interest in helping the Uyghurs and you can contact me directly via Twitter or contact World Uyghur Congress directly, we have the uh, email address that you can uh, you can write to or contact the uh, Stop Uyghur Genocide campaign. And also, um, not only just the um, terrible things that what is happening to the Uyghurs, also learn who they are. You know, we are the people that we love peace. Uh, we love music. I'm a singer. Uh, I, I have my own music band, uh, so as Silk Road Collective. Um, we have a planning a concert, uh, a virtual concert, uh, three uh, big um, ensembles, one from uh, Australia, another uh, from Europe, and one from here in the UK. We will be doing a joint concert on the 25th of October, and we will uh, advertise this event very soon as well. And so learn about the Uyghurs, who they are, and uh, um, the history and what happening to them and what actions that you can take. So uh, either uh, through uh, the available information, direct available information, also search YouTube. There are many interviews, uh, films, uh, documentaries uh, that is based on interviewing the survivors. Uh, for example, there's one uh, film that I uh, worked as consultant and interpreter translator, Undercover China's Digital Gulag. Um, it was uh, uh, awarded Current Affair BAFTA. And uh, that you can search from, from YouTube, you can watch it. It gives you very um, in-depth information about how the, the surveillance, uh, how the Chinese government using this uh, very sophisticated uh, technology um, and controlling uh, the people inside and outside. Uh, so uh, that film was also, um, uh, updated and was broadcasted by PBS, Undercover China. So uh, please, uh, you, you can find on YouTube. And there are several other uh, documentaries, very important documentaries. Uh, for example, um, Tell the World. Uh, please watch that, uh, Tell the World. And uh, um, many other uh, investigative uh, 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 documentaries by Al Jazeera, uh, by uh, CBS, by uh, uh, NBC. So if you uh, search um, Uyghur genocide or Uyghur or concentration camps, uh, that you, 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 will, you will find a lot of information, both written and uh, uh, videos, uh, podcasts, and uh, in that you will uh, understand more about uh, what is happening. 
and I will leave links to all of that in the description. Rahima, thank you so, so much. Um, and again, I'm, I'm truly sorry for, for what is happening to, to your people, to your family. I hope we can put this, we, we can get through this without much more needless suffering and that you are re reunited with your family soon again. And I will do what I can to spread awareness. This recording right here, I view this as just step one. Um, there will be other steps that I will take and I will promote this cause because again, as a fellow human being and as a Jew who whose family has experienced this firsthand, we, we need to stand together during these times and I, I'm, I'm here with you. So thank you, Rahima. Uh, it's been a great pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adar, for having me in your pro on your program. And, uh, uh, you know, every everything you do, other people do. It's uh, we are very thankful. We Uyghurs are very thankful to those who actually actively showing um, their showing interest and showing care. And especially, I must say that uh, Jewish community uh, all around the world and here in the UK, they have been the biggest, uh, biggest strength and the biggest hope uh, for me and for my people. Thank you. Thank you, Rahima.